Hello again everyone. This is uh, part two of the Turbo 400 switch pitch modification. The first part I discussed uh, the cases, the differences for what I'm going to be using it for. Uh, the modification that has to be made to it, which is simple. No big deal there. This video uh, is going to be the differences in the pump, uh, what to look for when trying to do this, and uh, input or forward clutch drum. So it appears the input and forward clutch drum is the hardest to come by and a torque converter. Uh, the pumps, there are several out there that are reman. It seems in, in the research I've done, there's three variances that, that I can find on the variable pitch pump. However, regardless of which ones you have, it, it, it seems you can use any stator, any body and gears if it was a switch or variable pitch. Uh, they will not interchange with the regular 400 and I'll show you the passages later and you'll see. Uh, the, the things to note, the variable pitch uh, has the real short splines in the bushing surface uh, the solenoid, and I'll show this in more detail here in a sec. So it, it seems if you can find any 65 to 7 variable pitch pump provided the body and, and stator are variable pitch, you're good. On the input shaft, there's two variances that I can find. So one has one feed hole top and bottom, and the other is like most 400s I've got with two feed holes. However, regular 400s uh, don't have the seal ring down here. So I'll walk you through, let you visually see. So a, again, uh, with the pumps and, and the variances, and you can interchange, I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to run this input shaft like it is with the single feeds. The dual, like most of them, I don't know if there's an issue. I can always drill it. I didn't want to, but I'll show you. There's your differences on the input shafts. You can see the passage variances. Notice the 66, which is like a 65, is singles. The 67 and up has dual feeds. So you can see what I'm talking about there. And there's a lot to keep in mind on these pumps as far as th there's two different pressure regulator assemblies that go in them and boost valve. Um, you got to definitely make sure and again there's info out there if somebody's curious but that's not the purpose of this video. Um, rest of the, the, the pressure regulator system is pretty much the same. So I'll show you the differences here. On the forward clutch drum, uh, the previous two holes that I had discussed, because you can see all the way through it, no ceiling ring land. You get over here, there's a ceiling ring land, but notice we only have one hole there, and it's the same on the bottom. So you have to have that, this style input. If you find one with the dual feeds, uh, you're still good. There's your differences. Ceiling ring, no ceiling ring. Uh, the rest of the drum inside's the same. Uh, thing to note, first and foremost, is your spline and this. This is switch pitch. You look at the regular 400, you can see that. You flip these bad boys over, the switch pitch has a stator control solenoid, or, uh, solenoid it bolts here, which is this bad boy that I got to repair the wire. It sits in there. Here's your valve and spring and retainer, uh, pressure regulator assembly. Uh, inside here, you can notice it's got a ceiling ring. And that ceiling ring is this bad boy that goes, you know, seals in there, obviously off our input drum. 
the regular 400. And I guess I'm reference here. You can see, very similar, you know. But the thing to note is, boom, stator solenoid. And in here, it's got a spot. You look in there, it's crazy. It actually looks like the same sleeve in the pump, you know. On the back side, this is where a lot of the variances happen here, too. So on the pressure regulator side, we can see this is a regular 400. Um, and it's pretty much the same. I mean, there's not a whole lot going on there. The magic is on the converter charge side. Regular 400, variable pitch. So there's that. This is our variable pitch cover. And there's regular 400. If you notice through here, and you come to this one, there's your difference. So there's your key components. You have to have the ceiling ring style drum. May or may not have two here. And there's your big key factor to look at on the stator. So there's not a... Um, it doesn't seem there, there's a big concern on whether you use or, you know, the, the early style or later pump stators. I mean, I can't find a pro or con one way or the other. The input shaft with the dual feed, obviously it's just more fluid volume, quicker. If I go to drilling it, obviously, you know, you will weaken the shaft. And this is kind of like a match set with the converter I got, so I'd rather just leave it the hell alone. So we'll see on that. Um, but yeah, so pretty much between the case mod, pump, stator control solenoid, drum, I did find the uh, original style two prong connectors for the case. So I'm thinking on the next vid, I will get everything cleaned up and laid out and we'll do like the gear train, what to look at and check, uh, the drums themselves. Then I'll try to do a assembly vid, then how I'm going to wire it and run everything and ought to be interesting. So uh, yeah, if you have any questions, comments, uh, like and subscribe, obviously. There's a lot of information I found on variances and pumps and all to the tune of about 50 pages, uh, most of which I already knew, which is common to me doing this. Um, this is solely another step in the process of converting a regular 400 to switch pitch. So I hope you enjoy. Uh, I'm going to wrap up, go do what I do, save the world one vehicle at a time. Thank you for watching.